Hi everyone, it's Giselle with a message for today. And today I wanted to talk about how we can see clues in our previous and um, earlier childhood experiences and past relationships about what path we need to take to heal. Because a lot of these um, lessons seem to repeat themselves in, in patterns. And I've had a lot of clients come to me and asking questions like, um, why am I constantly finding myself in the same relationships or butting heads with very similar people? I keep manifesting all these situations in my life that seem to be the same thing over and over. And these actually hold clues to what we need to heal ourselves and free ourselves once and for all from those karmic bonds. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, not all clients that I um, do readings and um, coaching sessions for are on the Twin Flame Path. So these kinds of um, healings do apply to everybody, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And I will give a few examples about uh, the Twin Flame journey, as well as people who are, in general, just wanting to ascend spiritually and break free from the things that have been holding them back to create the life that they have been wanting. Because I can definitely see throughout my romantic relationships that there was one very strong theme that I needed to heal, and that was around my throat chakra. And this not only applies to romantic relationships, actually, because I had a very confronting situation with a manager at work that I had to uh, eventually resolve. Otherwise, it was just going to persist and break me down energetically, my self-worth and also the way that I felt going to work. So when I looked back at my life, I recall being a very outspoken child, very bold, not afraid to say what they thought, and just very free in my expression. And this was very much encouraged by my grandmother, who was my primary uh, caregiver at the time. And she loved that about me. She nurtured that within me. And I felt very loved and very supported. Now, sadly for me, I was taken away from her at a very early age, um, around four years old. And then the people I was around were very stern in their approach with me. They did not encourage me to be myself. They actually wanted the opposite. They wanted me to be like them. And it was very difficult. But eventually, after years of of being programmed in that way, I lost my voice. And I no longer was able to express who I was freely. I had to keep all my thoughts to myself because they didn't believe in me. Um, the way that I had my gift was very much frowned upon, particularly because they would take me to religious um, services on Sundays where, you know, I was constantly being told, this is bad, don't ever use or interact with the types of um, <clears throat> energies that you have been because that is not of our religion and it made me very sad. So 
after years and years of that building up, eventually now I can link it and understand and that's why I've had to heal it. But my throat chakra um, was very much blocked. And all throughout my life, only up until quite the last few years really, was I too afraid to express myself. And it repressed my throat chakra and therefore I wasn't able to use it in the way that it was intended, which actually links in with physical illnesses. I used to, as a teenager specific, um, yeah, as a teenager, would get uh, tonsillitis all the time. I would often find myself only having healed from a, a, a round of tonsillitis only a month later again to be once again plagued with that illness and uh, it was so bad, you know, I would have to be on courses of antibiotics all the time. My immune sh system was shot and it, it was very bad. But the reason why I'm telling you this is because a lot of our repressed energies, such as throat chakra, it could be other chakras for you, can be felt in our physical bodies. And for me, it was tonsillitis. And one of the catalysts of me finally healing this within myself is through my twin flame journey. Because I was programmed to appease other people and not speak my own mind. Because of the adults, it wasn't just like one specific person. It actually was so many people in my childhood so many of the adults, I would ha at least, uh, you know, a handful, probably more even. I just haven't dealt that far because I, I got the main culprits, I suppose. Would you I refer to them as that? Um, you know, I those were the types of people I was surrounded with. They would suppress my voice and not allow me to express and be myself. So the final straw was when my twin flame came back to me seemingly out of the blue because communication was a big thing that had a blockage for us he would just not talk or open up and every time he had a difficulty he would just run away and be quiet and this frustrated me so much I do feel that as a parallel me and him both had throat chakra issues. Luckily for me, I am on my way to healing and I feel like I've healed, I would say, 90%. Of course, things can always improve, but I do feel I've healed the lion's share of, of my throat chakra issues. Uh, <clears throat> but what, what happened was, after, I guess, about a year of not hearing from my beloved they contacted me as I was about to lose hope because I'd never been in this kind of situation before this is the first time that we reconnected um through him contacting me out of his own you know because I had no way of contacting him and because I hadn't learned my lessons yet I was very much still in this I need to appease him I need to make sure that he doesn't run away again I don't want to say the wrong thing to make him run away. And that is not an act of self-love. That's actually an act of fear. And I realize that now. So what had happened was after our chat, I, that very same day, got tonsillitis. And I was thinking, how in the world did this happen? But then I was meditating on that and realized it's because I haven't been speaking my truth. I've told him everything he wanted to hear so that I could keep him in my life. And if you build your relationship, especially your twin flame connection on something like that, it isn't going to last. And so it didn't. We separated once again, restarted the whole cycle of the running and chasing and all that nonsense, which I don't like to um, label it as that because it has such negative um, energies attached to it. But that's essentially what happened. So I worked on myself and I believe it's the same year that I had to release 
other throat chakra related energies in work where I had to finally confront one of my managers and tell her exactly what I thought of her and she looked absolutely livid she was red in the face and everyone saw because the little um, meeting pods that we have in work are made out of glass so they're entirely see-through and people can actually look in and see what's happening and my friend said my god what have you said to this woman because there was steam coming out of her ears not literally of course but the way that her expression was people could see she had tears in her eyes and her face was red with anger not with with sadness just pure anger at the fact that I had the audacity to call her out on all the stuff that I felt she had mis um handled in our working relationship so that was very freeing and I felt then okay I have to speak my truth I can't be this changed version of myself that was programmed from childhood I need to be the version that my grandmother nurtured and loved I need to be outspoken free and unafraid to say everything that I want to say so that did help in my life, as well as on my twin flame journey, because I was more and more able to speak my truth. Now, I, at the time, I didn't realize why we had to separate once again. I was so utterly frustrated and saddened by that, you know, but I understand that as I'm needing to heal these things within me, my twin has to do that for them as well, for themselves. And um, I also want to say that if you're not on the Twin Flame path, you just happen to stumble across this video, or you want to help someone else in your life who kind of has similar issues but isn't you know, on the Twin Flame journey, I recognize in other relationships, other romantic as well as friendships, that I've always had these throat chakra issues because I remember my first relationship this person was so just horrid, just just the worst person ever to be in a relationship with. And he kept trying to change me to the point where I had to change the way I was as a person, the, the taste in food that I had, the types of films that I enjoyed watching, just really trying, trying to change me. Um, and of course, because I was scared and the pattern hadn't been broken, the karma hadn't been um, dissolved. And those fears from childhood had carried on and bled into my first romantic relationships. I was too scared to stand up for myself and say, no, forget you. I'm, I'm just going to be the t person that I want to be. Eventually I did because I, I broke up with that person. I broke free from that relationship. It really ended in a really bad, dramatic way. But that was the only way it could end because the karma had to be resolved. Um, You know... That really did show me as well. Your throat chakra was blocked. And these are the examples examples of as to why and then why you would need to heal that. So there are many, many examples of, of what needs to be healed. And it's it's sprinkled throughout your life experience. So I'm just putting this video out to try and resolve sorry, help you resolve um this within yourself because all of us here on the spiritual path do have things that we need to look at and and uh, need help with um, to try and, and break out of those cycles and finally be free and, and be our authentic selves because that's who we're meant to be. There are many other examples, but the main thing I was going to give was the throat chakra on because that was just so very prominent on my journey specifically. And I've noticed I've, I've attracted many clients um, who have throat chakra issues as well. It's like a lot of the things that I've experienced and, and managed to get out of, I'm attracting people who are having similar issues so that I can help them uh, because I've gone through it myself, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, your past will definitely have a ton of clues, you know, as to... Uh, what needs healing, what needs releasing. And every time I reconnect with my twin, because yes, we've reunited on and off over the course that we have known each other. 
every time we do reconnect, I feel that I've resolved another issue. So the first one was a throat chakra. Actually, no. The first first one was the base chakra and the solar plexus with regards to my self-worth. That was the first thing that he helped me realise. Because as a result of me broken down and, and people repressing my, my voice as a child, it wasn't just my throat chakra that was affected. It also really started to whittle down my self-worth. And so my twin helped me to build that up. And that was done during the stages of getting to know each other at the very start, before separation ever occurred. And then separation happened so that I could re rebuild my self-worth and really work on my self-love. And I really did that. And it was so good. It was such a good thing that I had the opportunity to finally heal. So then the second stage, when, we, when, when they connected with me um, out of the blue just as I was about to give up and think, oh gosh, this is never going to happen, is it? I mean, it's a whole year. What in the world is he ever going to come back to me for now? But he did. And that was a throat chakra issue. And then we disconnected again. And I was like, oh, for goodness sake, how many more times do we need to do this? You know, um, it happened again where he just came back out of the blue once again. Um, and that was to heal. Let me think. I haven't written these down. I'll need to reflect on them. <laughs> Maybe write them down might help. I'm sure it was around, uh, again, not, not self-worth as such, but believing in myself, more like um, a heart slash third eye chakra kind of thing where I had to really believe that I shouldn't be afraid to truly be myself, to, to be the intuitive person that I wanted to be. Because I was scared, I thought, my goodness, if he finds out that I am this kind of person that can read energies and look into his energy, which I don't do, by the way, I don't just look into people's energies willy nilly, you know, if there's something that he would rather resolve himself, I, I keep myself out of that because it's not fair that I'd be spying on him. So, um... That that was the issue that, that was being resolved with that coming together. And then, let me think, we did come together again. Ah, but this was me reaching out because I really wanted him to, to know that I appreciated him and all the things he's done for me. I just, this one time, I was just filled with so much gratitude that I needed to express that to him. And the thing, I, I'm sure I did a video on this because I, I remember some of my clients bringing this up at times um the thing that hurt me is that he couldn't take a compliment he couldn't just graciously accept my praise for him and he said thank you but I don't think you really know me and I felt a little bit like that was a slap in the face because I do know him I may not know every single detail about his life because we haven't talked about everything but I know him as a soul and his soul is very familiar to me and I thought my goodness how can you not see that I do know you and how can you not see how wonderful you are and you're just trying to you know say that I'm making this up like oh my goodness and that's you know that's again we had to disconnect once again but I feel that whilst he had to disconnect so that he could build up his self-worth during that time. I had to disconnect so that I could really focus just on myself, you know, and trying to cut off from this twin flame journey for my own well-being and um, sanity, I guess, and self-worth. Um, so then we, recon we reconnected once again. Again, this was him initiating. And I was very happy because it seemed very much more... Uh, progressive that time and he admitted so many wonderful things to me about remembering everything about us and I thought my god he's come a long way now that he's able to be more open because that was his main issue is he was very guarded his heart his heart was very sacred which of course everyone's heart should be sacred but he was so scared of sharing what was in his heart but now this time around he was so open he was so just more honest than he's ever been and he told me that he remembered everything about me and gosh, that, that really made me happy. 
But then there was something else that we weren't quite aligned with. So we had to disconnect once again. But this time I was confident. I had no fears about him not coming back because I knew he would. I just felt like, okay, do you know what? And I, I always kind of say this to my clients just because it's a funny analogy and it makes sense is that I saw him as a bun that was being baked in the oven and he was he was half baked at that stage you know he was very much uh, a much better version you know he was improving in his openness and communication towards me and I really love that but there were still aspects of him that weren't fully ready and I thought you know what it's fine. I'm just going to pop you back in the oven. You come out when you're ready. I'm just going to hear, um, be here and focus on myself. Hold space for you, but not pause my life. And so I was happy to let him go in that way. But then, you know, the March 2020 hit and everything started to change drastically, as we all know. And it was crazy. And um, yeah, we all had to adjust to a, a different way of living. And it was all madness all around the world. So I wasn't really thinking about... I mean, of course, I was concerned for him because of his job, you know, involving helping people. Um, so he was at high risk of contracting the virus. And so... I was I was concerned for him in that way, but I wasn't concerned for our connection because I knew that that was com coming back anyway, so I was totally fine. I needed to give him the space that he wanted, and that's totally, well, that he needed really, not, not so much wanted. Um, and I was completely happy with that. So then he connected with me once again. <laughs> um, but this was the final one where I completely said my piece without hesitation, without fear, without thinking, oh my God, if I tell him everything, he's just going to do another runner. I didn't care at the time. I thought I need to say everything and either accept me as I am or, you know, if you're not ready, whatever. And I told him everything that I needed to say. It's not an ultimatum as such. Um, it's just me speaking my truth and me not standing for things that basically weren't going to be what I was looking for because he was happy to come back and to date me again but I didn't feel the level of commitment from him that I know I deserve so I told him that and he didn't fully disagree but he said okay at this point in time I don't know if I can do that we're probably not on the same page and so he kind of said goodbye but it was an open-ended goodbye it wasn't actually goodbye it was a I guess he worded it as a goodbye but I know from his soul that it's not if that makes sense <laughs> um but that was the final break that he needed for him to work on the remaining issues that would make us come together properly and match this time around because I'm definitely not taking less than what I know I deserve and it's very important. So as you probably have been through a lot like this, you probably know how frustrating the twin flame path can be because some people think, ah, we're just going to have one coming together and that's going to be it and we're just going to stay together. It can happen like that. I'm not saying it can't. But for me, it hasn't been that way. And for many people, I have um, coached and done readings for along this journey. It hasn't been, you know, because the coming together parts are to show us what else we need to build and heal so that we can finally be those versions that will match. I guess what I'm trying to say is when you first come together and then you first separate, it's like you are trying to fit into each other's lives, but it's very near to impossible. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It's not going to fit. 
But the way that I'm seeing this now is that every time we, as many times as we need to, break away and come back together, our pegs are being shaped to fit eventually, you know, to the point where after so much work on ourselves, eventually we will be the right shape to fit. And it will be a round peg to fit into a round hole at the exact perfect size so that we will match. But everyone's journey is different and unique. And this is why it's so important to look at your own journey and reflect on the things that is being clearly shown to you by the relationships you've currently got in your life, not just your twin flame. So I'm just making this video to try and help you to understand that and to encourage you to look at these issues to heal and, and to really help you forward in your connection. So I hope that this has helped. And if you would like to, to connect with me, <laughs> all my details are in the description. I'm also doing 25% uh, off four session bundles on my community page. Thank you all so much for watching and have a beautiful day. Namaste.